Synthetic biology is a field where people are trying to get cells and molecules to do things that they don't normally do uh, biologically. So this is get proteins to carry out new signaling or catalytic functions, um, get cells to sense signals they don't normally sense or to carry out uh, functions that they didn't evolve to do naturally. So in the past in biology, the approach was to take an organism or a cell and slowly look inside and try to figure out what, what is going inside the cell. Now with synthetic biology, the idea was to start to build the cell from within, to take pieces of the cells, to take components of the cells, and to put them together and to create a different, a slightly modified organism. In the late 90s and then in the new millennium, the technology was so advanced, we are now actually able to synthesize a whole new gene. So now you don't have to rely on existing gene. You can basically design a gene. You can sit down at your computer and you can design a new gene. And then you can synthesize it completely as a chemical reaction. And you can make a synthetic gene that encodes to a protein that has exactly the same properties that you want to. So cells can do things that are hard to do for other types of molecules. Very often, you know, with uh, biological therapeutic or even small molecules, you worry about the cells being able to go to the right place, uh, being able to hit the right targets. There's only so many things that you can in engineer into a single molecule, whereas cells are capable of doing many more things. They can migrate uh, within the body to a certain location. They can sense their environment and respond dynamically to that environment. Um, they could produce uh, new molecules within the cells. They can synthesize new proteins that they can then release into their environment for some kind of therapeutic function. And they can create, they can express imaging agents that could be detected uh, externally and give us an insight into what's going on inside the body. And so um, cells are a very versatile system uh, for uh, executing diagnostic or therapeutic functions within uh, the body, you know, having a, a better ability to engineer them, whether these are bacterial cells or mammalian cells, and send them in, we can create new types of medical approaches that were previously impossible. Now, if you want to measure in real time these small changes, you have to have a very sensitive method. And you have to have a method that works in real time in live cells. And one such method is reported gene. So you have your gene that is usually not existing in the original tissue, and you clone it instead or you fuse it to the gene that you want to monitor. This gene will encode to uh, a unique protein, and this unique protein can be detected with one or more imaging modality. There's a pretty rich intersection between synthetic biology and imaging. That's because in synthetic biology, we're trying to develop synthetic biology technologies and tools that can go into the body. It's important to see where they are. Um, and so that's a place where imaging can help the synthetic biology field from a, a developing therapeutics point of view because we can allow uh, people to see where the cells they're developing are going within the body and what they're doing. The fact that now it's possible um, to engineer cells to sense their environment, for example. If we can connect that ability with the right types of imaging agents that these cells can make that can be detected externally, then we might be able to create completely new diagnostic. I think something that is unique that is coming up this year in the conference is, is synthetic biology. And I think the reason this is coming up is because we need to think about synthetic biology as a very big toolbox that has been unexplored in imaging. And in this case, we demonstrate how imaging using MRI and um, functional control using ultrasound can come together and control tools to develop through synthetic biology to do functions we have not been able to do before without these combination of technologies. So I, I think we're moving towards a very multidisciplinary field where there is a, a lot of things to explore, and I think this is the right time to do it. Asaf and I wanted to create Cyborg, um, which uh, despite the name is a very friendly and uh, <laughs> inviting group to kind of bring together people who are interested in combining 
imaging with synthetic biology. And you know, we recognize that there are a lot of people like me and Asaf um, within uh, the World Molecular Imaging Society who already do things related to synthetic biology. The reason we started the interest group Cyborg is that both Mikhail and I felt that there are a lot of people that in, within the molecular imaging community that are working on reported genes, that are working on synthetic biology, and they are doing it independently. And there was no way for them to connect. We are working on different imaging modalities. Some people are doing optical imaging, others are doing nuclear medicine, and are, some are doing MRI. But there is no lateral connection between them. So we're going to have a kickoff uh, spotlight session on imaging and synthetic biology, where we're going to bring uh, together a couple of experts in synthetic biology who will tell us about all the amazing things that you can do in terms of engineering cells uh, to do new things, both on the bacterial side uh, and on the mammalian side. And we're going to have a, a couple talks um, about imaging and reporter genes and how they can be used um, to enhance synthetic biology and, and vice versa. And, you know, really the session is for anybody and, and everybody who wants to learn about this area or who's, or who's doing work in this area. We want to, you know, create um, a session where walking out of it, you know, people will be thinking about new ideas. Right? They'll, they'll probably hear something about you know, new synthetic biology approaches or cell therapy approaches that they hadn't um, heard about previously, and hopefully it'll get people thinking about you know, what they could do um, to contribute to this burgeoning uh, field. Well, I think the most valuable uh, thing of being a WMIS member is the ability to network with other scientists throughout the world, meeting people in person and talking to them is probably the most important thing. When I go to, to WMIC, I spend as much time outside in the hallway than I spend in the lecture halls. Because talking to people in person, that's the best place to exchange ideas. And this is what I like about the, the WMIS, is the ability to network with people that I would not have opportunity to network with in any other conference or any other form. So if you are a prospective member of Cyberg or if you are just interested in synthetic biology or if it's just a buzzword and you want to learn more about it, we have uh, on Wednesday before the opening session, we have a spotlight session. Please just stop by and we have a word we have world leader, leaders in the field of synthetic biology giving presentations. Just come and check it out and see what it is.